my special guest, Father Linus Clovis. The lines are open and you can feel free to join in the conversation. We've been getting some messages that um, the word happiness uh, was spelled incorrectly um, as a title of our of our of a program, but that was done deliberately with a Y and not an I. Happiness. I think we have our first call. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Alive. You're on the air. Good evening. Hello. We lost that call. Hello. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Alive. We lost the call. Okay. The number is on the screen, 451-9788. Feel free to call and join in the conversation with myself and Father Linus Clovis. We have another call online. Okay. So, we were talking before we went on, on the break, Father Clovis, about the church and how we expect the world to be a little bit different from what we know it now and what our forefathers knew it before us um, with the advent of same-sex marriages and with um, yeah, polygamy now being poly on the yeah. cards. But actually, th this is the first time in history that there's been an attempt to redefine marriage and to actually have two men marry one another or two women marry. But what, it's what the first time. What is Although we've had societies where homosexuality has been recognized mm -hmm. uh, and even in some cases um, tolerated, um, it's never been actually institutionalized as it has now, you know. And the, even the Greeks, the, which, which is often um, the case in point, um, th there were st very strict rules about sexual behavior even between men. Mm -hmm. So, so this, the age in which we live in is really, I think, uh, the point where we are defying God and we're, we've thrown out marriage and said, we will now decide what is. Inter in interestingly, the, the, I mean, there are several books, almost prophetic books, uh, about this time in which we live in. And one of them is Axley's um, Brave New World, mm -hmm. you know, which is... We, we have another call. Hold that thought. Good evening. Thank you for calling News Make Alive. You're on the air. Hi. Good evening. How are you tonight? Good, good evening. I'm fine. Thanks. Good evening, Brother good, Corvus. Good evening. Let me, let me just say, you know, it's... Let me just thank you. We stand on two different sides of, of the religious boundaries you know i am pentecostal okay and and i respect your views but i i need to just compliment your your bravery your, your attitude towards it and sharing my experience i posted something just explaining to how, sh how to read and understand the bible on facebook and i lost a few friends for that but you know I, i'm pleased that that i have not lost favor in god because i was doing the right thing because people, the, the, we, we tend to interpret the Bible to suit our own wits and fancies. We take out parts just to suit ourselves, like the gay community is doing when, you know, they're using this thing about God says to love all. You know, yes, he said to love all, but we cannot love evil. We cannot love crime. Agreed. We cannot love those kind of things. We need to get it out of our brotherhood. You know, I embrace people. I will, I will accept who you are as a human being. I will not accept, you know, gays walking in. In other words, I will not join a party if I know gays are in the party. I will not go on a boat ride if I know it is to celebrate gays. I will not go and work somewhere if I have a choice if I know I'm going to work with gays. You know, we have to take a, a, a hard stand. And I'm not saying hate. I'm not saying hate. I am saying that, you know, we, we're becoming rather tolerable of them where, you know, let, let us love man we and love, love what they do. But I don't think we should um, exclude them because when you, when you exclude, then you're just throwing them um, onto themselves. What, what, what we need is to embrace them and to speak to, to befriend them and in this way lead them in, into uh, 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 the, the life that God himself wants all of us to live. I am agreeing with you. Mm. I am agreeing with you there. I'm agreeing. What I'm saying for me though and for other brethren who, who are a little weak, I would not encourage any weak person to let's say, you know, you go on a, on a nice joy ride or a nice, go, nice boat ride if you know it is where a gay party is. Um, if you are very strong, May you go there with, with, with a means of changing lives. May I ask no, you a but caller? I just wanted to call. I just wanted to call the thank Father Clovis for his courage. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. okay. The question I wanted to ask the caller is, where do we draw the line? I mean, if if I you're my friend, mm -hmm. and I've known you for years, but I have never inquired about your sexuality. Um, and then I find out that you're gay. If we go along the lines of the caller, does that mean I 
shun you as a friend whereas all before maybe for 20 years you had been good to me and you know you had been the model of a good friend the epitome of a good friend now then i found out by quite by accident or whatever the case may be that you're gay do i now shun you and not be your friend anymore you see that's that's i think for us no. christians that's one of the things that we have to um we have to overcome i mean we we have gay friends and and we know gay people and we interact with them whether through work through um social life or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. um but we don't condone their no. lifestyles. No, but yes, I, I agree. We we cannot con condone the lifestyle, but that doesn't mean that we reject the person because it's going to happen in someone's family. The, the, there is a likelihood that in the family there is somebody, and you cannot just cut them off. No, I, I'd say, you know, embrace them and, and try to find out what what went wrong to to lead them. Mm -hmm. We have another call online. Thank you for calling News Make Alive. You're on the air. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello. We lost the call? Okay. I'm so sorry. We have another call? Thank you for calling Newsmaker Live. You're on the air? I just had to call back to clarify. I agree with you. Yes, I will embrace and pray with them. Mm. I will not send them. I will not turn them away. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. then, sir. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so that's that's. I think that's one of the things that we, as Christians, we we are a little unclear on right. and we're not because mm. we're getting so much it's left yes. all right but what no, about the middle the middle yeah because you no know, if if you discover a family member uh, as embezzled money you know do you cut the person off no we have another yeah. call online thank you for calling news make alive good night how are you doing good night we're fine thanks good evening you? yeah um i have a very um interesting question for father clovis mm -hmm. and um apparently when i started listening to the program he made mention of uh, marriage, and it's not totally about happiness, it's about um, um, having kids and whatnot. I need to ask him, what if, since we believe in sex before, um, if sex before marriage is wrong, what if I happen to get married to a young lady, only to find out because of medical problems, she cannot have kids? Are you telling me? that this marriage is not on void Good am i telling you that the marriage it's is null and void no no i'm not no i'm not telling you the marriage is not and void what what i'm saying is if with the, your will you decide that you do not you do not want to have children it's not the fact that you don't have children but that's the same thing no it's not there's a, there's a difference um for, for instance as, as i mentioned abraham and sarah they were married they were validly married they couldn't have children it was it was a valid marriage okay and right 90 years later when well when Sarah was 90 eventually she gave birth what i'm saying is if the person excludes children at the very beginning deliberately deliberately i do not want children that marriage is not and void is that but clear to don't you? you think if god is uh, the all-powerful he could determine whether they want or not and still yeah. allow them to have but he gave us free will didn't he yeah he, he no um, what yeah, i don't think you quite understand what i'm saying i'm saying that god is always in charge if the couple decide they do not want children if they if they marry but exclude children from the from their lives they with their minds i don't want children that marriage is invalid and if a child should come along it would still be invalid because their their mind has decided they don't want children. It's, it's like a contract. But what if Can they eventually <laughs> begin to embrace and say, "Okay, right. maybe I was wrong." Right. In that in that case, that point it would become. Okay, we, we okay. lost the call. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. I'm left. But I I hope caller that we're answering your question and you're getting clarification on the point that you raised. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if later they change their mind, then it would be. The, then the marriage um, it then kicks in at that point. Mm -hmm. um, it, th this is what causes a lot of confusion for people when we talk about annulments mm -hmm. because they don't quite understand, understand. The, those. But it's like a, con a contract, you know. If you if you have a, a, a false clause or exclude something from the contract, mm -hmm. the contract is not and void from the moment. Right. Yeah. We have another call online. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Live. You're on the air. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I was just wondering, according to what you just said, um, do you, when you get married, do you just 
wait and see when you're ready to have kids for you to have sex. Because you see, the purpose of marriage, well, the main purpose of marriage is to, to have children. So if you get married, you're in love with somebody, you you do not want to have sex outside of marriage. You marry the person. But you'll have financial issues. You're living at your parents' home. Mm-hmm. You're not ready for kids. What do you do? Do you wait three, four years until you're all settled down properly to have sex? No, no, that's not what we're saying. We're, we're talk, uh, I'm talking about one's intention. It, it's... It, not every sexual act will result in the conception of a child. But then if you're, not, if you're not ready for kids, or now if you're having sex, you're not using protection, there's a possibility that you will get pregnant. If you well, do not, you cannot afford to make kids well, right now. Well, even if you're using what you call protection, you can still, there's a possibility of still having a child. There's no, oh, there's no contraception that is 100% um, effective with the exception of, of sterilization. Fair uh, enough, but you have a lesser... No, in fact, natural family planning is the most effective. Because if you think about it, the woman is fertile for about six and for about 12 hours in a cycle. 12 hours. The male sperm can live in her body for up to five days. Okay, so there's about a week when she's likely to conceive. Now, the other three weeks or or whatever, she is infertile. The, 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 The woman is infertile and cannot conceive. So in that time, one is free to have intercourse. So doing that, wouldn't you still be avoiding having children? It would just be another form of comp- contraceptive, but naturally. No, so it means it, you don't no, want no, kids. No, no, it's no. the you, mindset, it's as the you ma- said to yes. the other caller, right? Yes. It's going in knowing that I want to have kids, but just not right now because of my circumstance. Mm-hmm. Can't and I say the same thing and go on contraception? No. What's the difference? Beca- because contra- contraception is... An, an act by which you sterilize, you, in, in effect, you're sterilizing the woman. You're, you're, the woman's being sterilized. She's saying that I do not want children. Whatever God does, I am going to, to interrupt, interrupt it. If you say so, it, but it, to, it, me, it, hmm? to me, waiting when you're not ovulating is the same as contraception. It's just that you're using it but, naturally. Okay. It's just like taking it medication. No, no. There's the herbal medication, there's the, the doctor medication. No, but you see, I think what, what Father Clovis is saying, it's the mindset. First and foremost, it's your mindset. I don't want to have kids, and I prefer to have kids later when I have the space. I'm not in my parents' home. I, I you know, I, I will have children, just not now. No. And but the other you, one is, I won't have children at all. But no, if you on contraception, you not you same situation. You cannot have kids right now, so you decide. Okay, but the mindset so is different. different. Okay, anyway, thanks. Yeah, it's it's um, I know it's, it's a very difficult concept to 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 grasp, but but if you if you think about it, con- ev- uh, contraception is a medication, and you're taking a medication to make a healthy body unhealthy. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Hello, we have another <laughs> call. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Live. Thanks for holding. Hello? Yes, hello. hello. Um, Father Clovis? Yes. I think you are being very brave in tackling this subject tonight. But um, for some of us, I believe there are times when we get confused. For example, you know the Bible much more than I do. And it says specifically, I can't quote the exact um, um, writer, Two men shall not lie together. It Leviticus. is an abomination to the Lord. Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus, right. Thank you. Now, if we say we believe in the Bible, and in another area, in the New Testament, it says that our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, and Sodomites and all these other names that were given to these people, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if we are being soft with them and we are saying they have a problem and it's not their fault and so on, very soon we'll say whatever a person does, it is it is not their fault. So whose fault it is? And and to 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 um, ask you another question, um, Father Clovis, if our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, I cannot understand why the Holy Spirit would want to dwell in a house that is not clean. 
and by clean, I don't mean the person never makes a mistake, you know. But yeah. going against the principles that are laid down in the Bible. Yes. I, I, I agree. I agree with you. What, but whose fault is it? Ultimately, it's going to be Adam's fault because we've inherited Adam's weakness. He, he, his sin has, in fact, broken the mainspring in all of us. So whilst our nature, the one we've received, um, is, is, is defective, we still have some degree of self-control. And so what, what we're talking about is not whether a person is, has same-sex attraction or what, what is generally in, in, in ordinary language called homosexuality or homosexual, but what does a person do with it? The f it's the act that is the problem. It is the act that is a sin. Being homosexual is not it's, it, a sin, but to act on it is a sin. Being, uh, b for, for instance, lying, you know, being, having a temptation, or, or, or the, take the easy way out to lie, it, it, that inclination itself is is disordered. It's not a sin until the person actually lies. Yes, now, Father. But um, so therefore, what about men, thirty, late twenties, forties, who st prey on young boys, ten, eleven, and twelve? Well, that is a, a serious sin, in the same way as men would prey on young girls. The, 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 the fact that it's homosexual, um, it, it's still a sin, as much as it is, as, as a homosexual act would be. Although, I mean, that St. Thomas, in fact, says that it's, it's even more serious for the simple because reason, you, it's a perversion. You have more, one, yeah. more than one sin occurring yeah. here. You have yeah what we call the homosexuality uh, homosexual sin, sin yes thank you mother thank you yeah. thank you caller thank you that was very we appreciate the, yes. the comments and the the discourse that yeah. i think that was really yeah. good um but i was saying that we have the homosexual sin and then we have the one of the, the, the destruction of innocence, of innocence. Mm -hmm. you know there's the the perversion of the boy mm -hmm. himself because now you're leading them into a lifestyle that he didn't choose and doesn't want um and if, in fact, that, that's one of the, 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 the sad things about homosexuality is that once you're exposed to it, 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 it's, it's it perpetuates yeah, um, vicious cycle. Yeah. We have another call online. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Live. Yeah, blessed evening. Blessed um, evening. The priest, um, COVID, so I just wanted to ask a question. You know? Sure. Um, I was wondering, you know, because I'm feeling like only based on the Bible and on the laws of nature, I mean, nothing in nature or in the animal kingdom, you know, you could just watch the animal kingdom. I mean, nothing goes against that law, you know, where the male and the female, you know? Yes. So, in, I think not just the Bible, you know, the other laws out there. Yeah, I, I, nothing I think else. God created everything, and you know, everything is. In line with the Greek, just human beings, you know, we committed suicide. No animals are committing suicide right now, you know. Yes. So I was just wondering, if does the old church believe in science, though? Apart from just the Be Bible. You believe know? in? Again? Science, science. Science, science. of course. Yeah. Um, most of the, the, the scientists were, were Catholics and, and priests of that, you know, from about the 12th century right through to the 18th century. Um, yeah, we do. We certainly do believe in in, in science, and G God is the the master, Lord also of nature. Um, and so we can, when we look at nature, we can. It gives us an idea of the of the intentions of the um, Lord of nature, the Creator of nature. We can see what was His purpose. Um, next question. Um, 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 did you did you say um, you have a degree in um, um, Theology. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering, you, do you know about the God Bacchanal too? <laughs> what? That God Bacchanal. God Bacchanal? Yeah. There's a God named Bacchanal from Rome. No, There's since a he, has a, he has a degree in theology, I was wondering. I mean, theology is like you're studying God, you know. So there's a God named Bacchanal, you're saying? Yeah. The Baal. There's the Baals. Um... Bal, you're aware of Bal, yeah, Bal, put him, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, he's our um, a, a Phoenician God. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because. I know theology, I know theology is the study of God, you know, it doesn't specifically mean it's just Catholic or it could be anything, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a general study, right? It's general, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, all right then. Yeah. Thank you so much, caller, uh, yeah, for your love, comments yeah. and your questions. Mm. God yeah. bless you. Yes. Very interesting calls, uh, Father, <laughs> Father Clovis. Um, so, yeah. Um, back to... Um, the 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 procreation aspect mm -hmm. of of the marriage um we have another call thank you for calling news make alive hello hi good evening. hello hello sir oh. kill the cat please well, it was not me and my title <laughs> it's you tonight is, is that right is, is it's, it dead it's now st it's still it's still echoing mm. Well, it's not me, man. It's not you. I'm almost switched off. Uh oh. Maybe you need to be switched off completely. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's much better. Thanks. Father Claus, good to see you. You're looking good. well. Oh, yeah, thank you. I didn't know you'd almost left the priesthood. <laughs> no, that been, no, that, that would have been a loss. That, yes, <laughs> that was from the beginning. That would have been a great loss. Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused though about the mindset you were talking with the lady. I, I, I suggest also left confused. Okay, yes. If the mindset of a married couple is not to have kids, yeah, at the moment of the contract of marriage is contracted. Well, it's, what, a, what it's, very, it's a very, it's a very. What if they decide after, immediately after getting married that they, they, they want to have kids? Uh, whatever they decide afterwards doesn't come into it. It's what, what was the intention at the moment they exchange vows. All right. Let us say, let us say mm. they decided even in advance of getting married, but they would use the, 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 the rhythm, rhythm method, the knack and contraceptive, mm. but with the minds that not have How about with the men not having children? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the marriage has been valid. That's why we have the investigation before the marriage. And one of the questions asks, do you intend to have children? Now, the, the, if the person says yes, um, if, sorry, if the person says no, I do not intend to have children, they cannot be married. If they say yes, it is presumed that that is their intention. Now is that normally asked of marrying couples? Do yeah. they, they plan to have kids? Yes. Yes. It's, it's a, it's a, in, yes. Now, in, I know you're a priest, and, and if, if one is talking to you about a particular subject, like, like same-sex marriages, we're going to hear from a priest, obviously. But don't ever allow yourself to, to think outside the priest box. Do I... Outside the yeah, box. Yeah, okay, yes, I'll, 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 I'll do that. I'll try. You do that? Yes. And so, is the thinking the same outside the priest box as within? Um, because it, the, the it, Supreme it, Court, I, I, I guess, decided, uh, made its decision based on people's freedom to choose how they want to live. Well, it's, it's changed, it's, 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 it made its decision on ideology because the, the, there was a, there was a lot of pressure to change the law, and it was made very clear that in in bringing in same sex um, marriage, that they were changing the 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 whole concept of what marriage is. Now, now we need to make a distinction. I think um, marriage, if you if you take children out of the equation. Two people can love each other, okay? You can love your brother, you can love your sister, you can love your mother, your father, you can love a good friend, and so on. But these are not sexual relationships. Agreed? Mm-hmm. Right. When you have a sexual relationship, the, the norm is man-woman, complementary, everywhere. And why, why, does, why is the state interested in this? Because it's going to, it's joining two families together. Property is going to be involved. Okay, children are going to be involved. The education of children is going to be involved. Taxes um, see, and all of these uh, things. Where, where now, now what? Yeah, 
Now, well, what... something of a problem about all this. And let me admit to you something I said on TV myself earlier. Yeah. That I really can't give intellectual um, reasons <laughs> for my confusion. I really cannot make up my mind uh, to, to really debate this subject. Uh, That's I, fair. I have a very difficult time. Okay. Um, whether it's socializing, I, I don't know. But I have to admit up front, I have a very, very difficult time. Um, uh, taking any side on this. If you are very religious, if you, I can I can see that the, your mind is closed to anything else. Mm. But if it's not, I then you start thinking about what does he mean by the norm. Yeah. There was a time when it was the norm to have black people in in, in chains. There, a lot of things were the norm and accepted by law, and even by the church. I dare say, some pretty mm. horrific things were at least tacitly endorsed and sometimes openly endorsed by the church. But these things changed and the church, church changed his mind. Although, again, I, I kind of am stuck with the, the, the notion that um, the church should modernize, right. change its rules mm -hmm. to accommodate new thinking, okay. and not so much in that box. Okay. Can but, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I and I think I understand where you're driving, but I'd like to make the point that there were civil unions before, where uh, uh, the same-sex couples could live. To, they could have a kind of a marriage. It wasn't given the name marriage, but they had property. They had pensions um, uh, and um, uh, the other benefits that heterosexual couples had. But they weren't satisfied with this. They wanted to use the name marriage. They wanted they, they wanted equal treatment, like the, the black thing. And I'm saying I'm not offering this as a defense. But you, I'm very but, you, how, you, but you see, you can't have equal treatment if a thing is defi is defined for complementarity. It's not the person, but it's the nature, the two natures, the male nature and the female nature. Yeah, but nature. are we talking church again and faith? Uh, because I'm I'm saying to you that. Um, I can understand the, the, the civil union wanting e equal rights as the regular um, marriage. Because what, what, what intellectual reason can you come up with other than a religious-based um, reason to deny to males who want to get joined, civilly or otherwise, okay. but, oh. with all, but, with all the, but with all the attachments, or not a normal marriage. Okay, what are the attachments of normal marriage? Some rights, I, I suppose, a lot of rights that um, I, I've got put my finger on it right now. A lot of rights that... Um, okay, well, yeah. first of all, property. Yeah, they okay. have that. They, and they have that in the civil union. Yeah. Pensions, so if one dies, they can inherit the other's pension, and so inheritance rights. They, so they what was that. it that was... What, what is it that they, that they demanded in the end? To, the name, like the name regular. marriage. The name marriage. They wanted the word marriage. marriage. Yeah. Well, I, like I say, Father Clovis, I have a, I have a serious problem with this. Because no, it, okay, well, can, okay, what I would... In, in, no, in, don't misunderstand me. Yeah. I'm on your side. Yeah, yeah. I am, no, no, I'm, I'm not, kind, I'm not I'm I want to... <laughs> go, yeah, go on. I'm kind of I'll saying that, that those unions almost <laughs> demean a strong word regular marriages so that I, I would I, I guess I, I, I would be less unhappy with a civil union a contract uh, but then again that the, the guy says well on what do you base that and I'm lost I can't I can't tell him why why am I, why is my marriage superior to his except in a in a religious sense thank you very much anyway I'd like to pursue that with you. Yes. Um, I don't know if we can meet sometime <laughs> at, outside yeah. of the... Yeah. yeah. We talk about it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rick, for calling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... Because we, we're going to have a problem. Because if... Uh, I don't know if, when it will be addressed in the U.S., but when, when the churches are told you have to marry two men... Yes. Or two women. And can they, de de can can they, they deny? Can they say no? Can we, have they? An, we have another call online. Thank you for calling Newsmaker Live. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, the discussion tonight is interesting. It's sensitive. I guess it's timely, but it's a very sensitive yes. um, topic. Mm -hmm. One, because, yes, we are concerned. We have, uh, we have civil we're talking about. We're talking about Christianity. We're talking about church. 
we're talking about um, human rights and a number of factors. And I think we need to make deliberate efforts to deal with them one at a time so that we can help with the confusion that it seems to be causing. Now, if we take the scriptural perspective, the Christian perspective, what you will find is that, and, and I mean, I listened to the caller a while ago. If you're going to take it from a Christian perspective, you're going to look at the standards, the laws, the precepts, the principles of Christianity as your guide. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you do not wish to take it from a Christian perspective, and you want to take it from a civil perspective, you're going to look at the laws and the whatnot that governs that aspect of it, and you take it from there. You try not to mix the two and to come over on the side of, um, oh, God says, or whatnot, and, and whatnot. Because if you believe what God says, you're going to recognize that it is not right. When you understand we make locks and we make keys, you do not open a lock with a lock. You do not use a key to open a key. We do not wear two left shoes. There are certain laws governing the way we do certain things. You, you are built, we, are, we, we do not use, um, we breathe through our noses, we don't breathe through our toes. So we know how our body is made up. There are certain things that we are going to close off our minds to, to facilitate what we need in this moment for our own gratification. And so you're going to choose that if a person chooses to live outside of God, then that is where they're going to rest their right to be able to have that particular union and all of the benefits of it, regardless of what other persons think. When we understand the term marriage, marriage in itself, that type of union is scriptural. In Genesis, marriage came before sin. Therefore, marriage is clearly defined by God who says male and female created he them he said to them they will live and cleave they shall become one flesh the one flesh there is the connection that they are going to be able to make you have penetration you have a connection that is going to take place there that bonds them spiritually among other things and then he said to them be fruitful and multiply that's from the Christian perspective all of that was before sin what you find is that sin would have perverted it. Earlier on, a question was asked, who do you blame? If you follow from the reasoning that's going on there, you blame God. No. No, listen, I'm saying something. If you follow from the reasoning that persons want to take, you mm. blame God. Because what happened in the garden, when the Lord came, based on the scripture, when the Lord came to Adam, he said, what, have, what has happened here? Basically, Adam said, you know what, not me, the woman you gave me. So who's, who's to blame? God, he gave the woman. When he turned to the woman, you know what she said? The serpent you created. So who created the serpent? God. I say it like that. When the Lord turned to the serpent, you know what he did? He flicked his tongue in God's face. You. Because you are the one who created me. We need to be mindful that when we do not take responsibility for our actions, our selfishness, among other things, that we were pointing back at God as the one who created those distortions. These things came as a result of sin. I'm talking from the Christian perspective. Yeah, you and were very well put, very well put. Yes, and throughout <laughs> history, we would see God ministering mercy. So the mercy he would extend to the man who he recognizes is erring, and of course, you know, he'll better, then he'll take grace and he will cover for that person. We've had instances where the selfishness of a man will cause him to withdraw from the woman and ejaculate on the ground. And the Lord said, you know what, this is not acceptable for what I have um, think. And of course, that man was killed. At the same time, God in his mercy would extend his grace towards us to allow us with the errors and the misdemeanors and whatnot. And so the homosexual now, if it's my brother, when he was born, my mother was given a son, not a homosexual. When I was born, my mother was told, you have a daughter, a girl, not a homosexual. So it's how do we know that a person is male or female? It's by their genital. And therefore, even if you have a hermaphrodite, 
what a parent is supposed to do is not decide they want a girl or a boy and they make that decision, but you look at the one that is most dominant, which directs the sex of the child. So if the male organism is dominant, this is who the child is. We have people who are clear that they were born male and female, and they are choosing to pervert their natural course. The scripture says, anyone who turns the natural course of the woman aside will be condemned. It's plain. But of course, because the scripture is filled with those guidelines, let's put it out. Now let's take the civil and let's start to see that we're discriminating, we're putting people under oppression and whatnot. Whether it was slavery or whatnot, they were not right to do it. I'm a black woman. I meet a white woman. Her nose is on her face. I've never seen a, a white woman with her nose anywhere else. What is different between us is the pigmentation of our skin. There is no wisdom in thinking that because my pigmentation is different from yours that I am lesser or whatever, but it's a perversion of the mind. And so to help the homosexuals, to help all of us who are having confusion, the Word of God says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if we want to renew our minds in God, then we will stand against that act. We will love the sinner, not the sin, and we will go out of our way to help them understand God's love for them so that they too can make the turnaround. God has asked us to turn away from sin, not wallow in it, and then try to hold him in a headlock for him to agree with us. Thank you. Oh, well, Thank well you said. so very much. That was very well said. Yeah. And what a fitting contribution to end mm -hmm. our show on. Final thoughts and comments from you, Father Clovis. I think we are living in exciting times, times when each and every one of us will have to make a choice, you know, for good or evil, for God or for the devil. And I pray that St. Lucia, which I love dearly, that my fellow St. Lucians will stand with God um, I would encourage my brother priests and pastors you know, to speak out it, and to, to take a stand you know, for God, for the gospel. You know, regardless of denomination, we are facing an, a common enemy, Satan, and we have to stand together. Quick question before we, excuse me, before we end. Whatever happened to the Christian council? There was a, a Christian council, wasn't there? There, there was. I can't tell you what, what happened to it. I was never part of it. Oh, you were never part of it? No. Okay. But I would think that would be a, a, an opportune time for there to be a rejuvenation of that. Yes. Um, yes. And for yes. the church to speak out. To speak out, yes. Um, I, I know that our leaders in this country have not yet um, spoken about this one way or another. But um, Pau Duva, Pau Duva, Pau, yes. you yeah, know? In fact, that you mentioned that, it would be good for ordinary St. Lucians to, to, to write your, your um, member of parliament, your representatives, mm -hmm. and, you know, on both sides of, of the house, especially mm -hmm. with elections coming up, mm -hmm. you know, and to, to get them to make a commitment one way or the other, to, certainly to make our views known, you know. Um, th what do the people of St. Lucia believe? What do we hold on to? What do we stand for? We stand for God. Do we care? Sir I Lucia? and my house will serve the Lord. And this has been another episode of Newsmaker Live with me, Laura Jabier. See you next week. <laughs>